say hello to the camera. I've decided to make a bit of a devlog this week. So... Awesome, hello camera. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's about it. I just wanted to get that. Hopefully it was recording. Yep. yep. Thing run on an entirely separate process, so we spin off a separate process. Then, by just killing that process, why we reload and then pre-starting everything from scratch? Is that a viable option? Because I feel like that may also have other benefits, such as, for example, the, uh, like the 140 multi-ending objects with gizmos causes strange behavior when scaling. I think like we're just yeah. not allowed to scale with gizmos because I checked how I'm real. I'm... Is this thing on? Why is it? That's better. Sup. Welcome to the devlog. This is going to be a hopefully weekly kind of show, we'll say, on my channel where I just show, document what on earth happens because to be quite frank, I feel like we have been doing as a team a terrible job of like actually showing what on earth we do, what it is we're doing with Hazel. I've tried to do stuff like this before and I don't think I've managed to stick to it because it just takes up too much time. It just causes too much friction, we'll say. The fact is we're a small team. There's three of us, me, Tim, and Peter. Aside from just working on Hazel, I have other things that I do, such as make like non-Hazel related videos for YouTube primarily. And to be honest, I've struggled to make Hazel devlogs like I used to back in the day because I just overthink it. I end up spending all of my time making videos and doing the media production side of things. And I run out of time to actually work on Hazel, which is really frustrating. So these are gonna be just really chill, really laid back, frictionless. Frictionless is the key word. That's why I'm sitting here on the floor and not on the actual couch. It's to signify the chill nature of these videos, deep. And like, honestly, I kind of want to be able to look back on these videos at some point in my life and just see like what it was like. Like, what was life like back then? What was developing Hazel like back then? I think it's really cool to be able to keep like a development log, like literally just for me, even you guys aside. And I'm also feeling like it's kind of a bit sad because when I look back at those old videos of the Hazel devlog that used to exist over the years, like it's just, well, for one, it's really inconsistent, which is a shame. You can't kind of see it evolve over the months, but also like to me, I don't think it's as enjoyable to watch because I just spend all my time talking about the code and showing stuff rather than also including like what life was like back then, which is why I'm hoping to intertwine this a bit with b-roll maybe even a bit of my personal life as well just so that it really is like almost a log of my life in a way it's like devlog the devlog is me i'm the thing being developed so yeah hope you guys enjoy the footage in the beginning was from our weekly meeting we have a meeting Wednesday nights. This is not an invitation with me, Tim and Peter. Peter of course is on the TV because he's in Sweden and we are here in Melbourne, Australia. Every week, Wednesday nights, we have a meeting for a couple hours. Usually we talk about what we've done in the last week, what we're going to do in the next week. It's kind of like almost like a sprint meeting, like a scrum situation, but it's way more laid back and chill than that. And yeah, we just hang out as well. And it's a kind of a good, I guess, team building experience since Peter isn't here with us in the flesh. Almost sounds like he died. Peter's no longer with us. <laughs> Sorry, Peter. Uh, and then I'm probably going to try and focus on a bit of a theme for each kind of devlog so that there's something to talk about. So I'm finally getting to talking about multi-threading today. So that will be later in the video. The other thing that the team is currently working on is we're working towards a release. So we have not updated like our master branch of Hazel, the Hazel that's available for patrons, like the big proper version of Hazel that we're building. We haven't updated the master branch for that in like, I think eight months. And so we've got all these new features that have gone into the dev branch, but they haven't been properly tested and we can't really do a release until that's done. So after months of work and lots of bug fixes and all that stuff, like we have finally, we're, we're basically ready for a release. So hopefully at the end of this week, if not the next week, we'll be doing our first kind of release where we merge that into the master branch and that will kind of be a new version of Hazel, I guess, which is exciting. And that's what Tim's doing right now. Uh, I'm writing the changelog for Hazel. Um, what has gone in and out of Hazel in the last like six to eight months, because yep. there's a release coming up. 
Look at that. That's a lot. Yeah. That's funnily enough, whoa. That's bug fixes. This yeah. is the bug fixes section, which is half of well, the release notes. We sure do write a lot of bugs. <laughs> and then fix them. File names that are too big shouldn't render the whole string. Yeah, fix that today. Oh, wow. Check Wait, go that. back to the Jira issue. Look at those. But have a look, I fixed it today. You're, you're showing me a bug that I never knew existed. <laughs> and then look. It works with resizing oh, and stuff like that. Oh, right. So you can resize it and it just puts a dot 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 in. Yep. It's little things. It's the details that make Hazel great. Yep. When are we releasing this? Uh, this week. This week? Yep. Damn. If plans haven't changed, it should be this week. Are you asking me? I was looking at you to confirm <laughs> plans haven't changed, yep. All right, I'm going to show you guys uh, what the deal is with multi-threading because we basically have multi-threading in a sense in Hazel now. This is something I mentioned in like the last devlog, the last normal kind of devlog before we started this exciting new devlog series. Uh, this is Hazel's editor, Hazelnut. If I just hit play, you can see this is Dichotomy, the last game we made for the last Ludum Dare game jam that we did. What you see here is running single-threaded. <laughs> we use something called Optic for um, like profiling. So if I just record this for a bit, it'll connect to Hazel. And we can kind of see what's going on. Um, I'm gonna try and like do some zooms and stuff so that you guys can see this a bit more clearly, but we'll see how we go. So basically what this is, is every single uh, frame that was captured during me kind of hitting play and then stop. If we look at any given frame, there's two threads that are running kind of, I guess, more or less permanently. We have a main thread and we have an audio thread. Now, uh, audio is, we won't talk about audio because um, that's kind of a, a thing, a thing of its own. But this main thread um, is basically responsible for the entire CPU side of operations that go into a single frame in Hazel minus audio. And then these kind of things you see here, these are all function calls. Uh, well, not all of them, actually. Some of them are like scopes because you can add like a little, uh, you know, tag so that it profiles, you know, like whatever's between a scope, not necessarily a function. But most of them are functions that we call. And the way that Hazel was kind of written from the ground up, there's so many things to talk about. So I'm going to see how I go here. <laughs> but basically, you can kind of see what's going on. Um, if we look at one frame, let's just focus on this frame here. So this frame went for seven milliseconds. Uh, you can see that it starts with the Hazel renderer wait and render, um, which we'll get to later. And then it ends with this on update. Now, in reality, it kind of happens in reverse. But the idea is that Hazel editor layer on update is where the entire kind of application frame stems from. So it does a lot of critical tasks, such as, you know, rendering the whole viewport and all of the kind of associated UI and playing the game and doing whatever you're doing kind of for that frame. Now, even though this says Hazel Scene on Render Editor, this doesn't actually do really any of the rendering. Instead, what it does is it actually submits it into something called a render command queue. And that, as you can probably guess, gets evaluated or executed here. So Hazel Renderer Wait and Render, what this function does is basically just goes through the queue of commands that have been submitted from this kind of Hazel Scene on Render Editor uh, and it will go through and actually execute those commands. And that might include things like executing Vulkan draw calls. So issuing Vulkan draw calls so that we can actually like draw geometry and do whatever it is that we need to do. And really you can arbitrarily submit anything you want into this queue. Now, Hazel worked with this render command queue from like the beginning. So years ago, when I first wrote Hazel and I first wrote like the render and the application system, it had this like immediately. But as you can see, it doesn't make much sense to have this if you're just running everything on one thread. Because what you have is, uh, you know, basically you kind of, I guess, submitting all the commands. And then after that's done, you evaluate all the commands. And if you're having trouble visualizing this because it shows the wait and render first, you can just kind of skip over to the next frame and see kind of how that works. So where's that frame boundary? Here it is. So you can see like after this, there's another uh, wait and render. So basically everything that gets submitted here gets executed here as part of this wait and render. And it's called wait and render because it 
was designed with multi-threading in mind. Wait meaning that it's possible that it might have to wait if it's still waiting on commands to be submitted because it's finished its previous frame early. Now, hopefully this is beginning to maybe make sense as to what we could do with this kind of power that we have here. What we could do is we could basically submit all the commands over here and then cut out the wait and render because we'll do that on another thread and immediately jump from here all the way to this next kind of on update that we actually have to do over here. So the idea is that this wait and render can actually be done in parallel with this. Now, how can it be done in parallel with this if it's like, if this is happening here, if this is submitting commands to there, how can we do it in parallel? Well, the idea is that the render thread, which is what does render a wait and render and executes all the commands, that runs one frame behind. So the main thread is always kind of one frame ahead. What it does is it submits commands. It submits any arbitrary, and by commands, I'm really just talking about code. Like you're just saying, I want you to do this, but on your own thread when you're ready. All you do is you submit, you, you know, you do any other kind of main thread related application tasks that might be outside of rendering, of course. But then when it comes time to render, you just submit the commands for rendering. And then what happens is those commands are executed when you finish your frame over here, you kind of kick the render thread and you tell it, hey, now you can start executing those commands I submitted. So what happens is you end up with the main thread being say at frame zero, then the frame changes to frame one, and that's when the render thread starts executing frame zero. And only after that's kind of done, do you continue on to, you know, application frame two, render a frame one. Now, of course, these can finish early. Either of them, it depends like if you're render thread bound or main thread bound, meaning what thread is taking more time, what thread is holding the other thread back. So of course, if you do finish early, then one of the threads will just kind of wait and do nothing. Could be the render thread, could be the main thread, but you can never kind of have them not be this distance apart. So you can't have the main thread run ahead because that wouldn't make sense. Like the, the user needs kind of visual feedback so they can make decisions in their game. You can't just pre-submit a hundred frames and then play them out like a replay. But then also the render thread can't possibly go in front of the main thread because the main thread is the one that's telling it what to do. So it has to wait for instructions. Now, this is a very common approach in game engines and applications for like, I want to say decades, but probably around one decade, maybe. In Hazel, because we use Vulkan, we don't strictly have to stick to executing Vulkan commands only on the render thread. Whereas if you use something like OpenGL, because OpenGL has to be tied to just one thread, it can't, you can't multi-thread it. If you try and use it from another thread, that's not allowed. You basically end up with your OpenGL render context on that render thread, and then the main thread submits everything to it. Uh, or you might even need to have your OpenGL context on the main thread. So back when I worked at EA on the mobile engine on Android, for example, I don't know if it was like certain Android drivers or devices, but we basically had to have OpenGL be on the main thread. So instead of like creating an additional render thread for OpenGL, we created an additional main thread, an additional application thread, I guess. And the main thread was the render thread because it had to be. But with Vulkan, we can be very flexible. Of course, you can have more than one thread. You can do, execute Vulkan commands on the main thread. And in fact, we do do that for, for some things. You can have an additional like resource loading thread, for example, that can actually copy stuff and submit it to like the transfer queue or whatever to get stuff onto GPU memory. The possibilities are endless. And that's one of the reasons why Vulkan and DirectX 12 are just such powerful APIs. Okay, so I kind of said that this was multi-threaded, but then I said it's single-threaded. So what's going on? So what I did was I was a little bit lazy not really lazy, but I actually didn't get around to uh, making the hazelnut editor multi-threaded because that requires I'm GUI to work with kind of multi-threading. And I'm GUI does not work with multi-threading. Now I have got it to work in a separate branch years ago. Uh, and I can demonstrate that. If you guys are interested, I might make a video just talking about multi-threading I'm GUI. But uh, I didn't get around to doing it for this. And also, I figured like, you know, when you're making a game engine and when you're focusing on on prioritizing software development, one of the most important things you have to consider is the impact on the user. Now, for a game engine, there, there might be several users. There might be the people who build the games using the game engine. But I think for the most part, people would think of like the players of the games as like your primary clients. So you obviously use the engine to make a game, but then you ship that game and then the players, those are the kind of primary group of people you care about. So I figured, well, our runtime doesn't have I'm GUI at all. So why don't we just make the runtime multi-threaded, at least to begin with, 
because sure, the editor would of course be faster if it was multi-threaded and we could do things potentially quicker. But to be honest, performance has been fine. It hasn't been like a huge pain point for us. And really we would want the players of our games to kind of experience the benefits and the improved performance first. So if I just kind of close this out and uh, I'll just start up the runtime instead, I should probably mute this because it'll probably have some music. Let me just mute the music, sorry. I know I wrote it and you guys want to hear it because it's beautiful, but we'll get to that later. So this is Dichotomy running in like the normal kind of Hazel runtime, right? This no I'm GUI, this is like the published game kind of. It's still like a release build, not a dist build. So there are some differences, but uh, if we just hit enter to play or whatever, and then we hit control F3, you can see here that we have, uh, control F3 just shows some details as you can see, by the way, nothing too uh, fancy, but you can see that we have a main thread and we have a render thread and we can actually see kind of what is waiting on what. Now, this is actually showing that the render thread is waiting for 0.57 milliseconds, which I'm, I'm actually gonna go ahead and say that I don't think that's true. This is much more likely the main thread is waiting on the render thread because the main thread is taking 1.02 milliseconds, which is less than 1.93. And then it's waiting for 0.91 milliseconds, which is the difference between 1.02 and 1.93. So I don't know what this is. This might be like some kind of bug. Let's just get rid of that. Um, but basically, uh, yeah, we have two threads. It results in a faster CPU time. So this is our CPU frame time and this is our GPU frame time because of course the frame needs to actually be rendered on the GPU as well. So you could look at this and you could say, okay, we're CPU bound at 3.71 milliseconds or whatever because that's above the GPU. Now, if you take a look at this, you might think that, okay, sure, 3.71 milliseconds, these two numbers, uh, if it really is multi-threaded, like this should basically be the frame time? Why is this not 1.93 milliseconds? Why is it 3.71? Uh, and to be completely honest, I probably couldn't really tell you why. Uh, I think that it's, it might come down to how this is timed. It might come down to other threads that might be slowing it down. It I don't, I, I also think that this main thread measurement is not the entire application frame, it's just the game. So basically like all the scene rendering that happens on the main thread, so the submission, you know, going through every entity, updating all the C-sharp scripts, I think that's what this is. There might be external kind of, you know, things in that that aren't included because they're not really game specific. They might be like Hazel backend kind of window management or whatever related, but that's probably worth kind of investigating or at least showing what the difference is there. But you can still see that obviously if we add these two numbers together, we'll get like 3.9 or whatever. So that's still higher than this. And also this might be from a frame in front of this. So you can see if I just let it run, like it kind of fluctuates. But what we can also do is open up Optic here and just give that a, a record, right? So if I record this, because I'm running a release build, by the way, if I was running a distribution build, of course, you can't profile with Optic because Optic is stripped and all the profiling stuff is stripped from the from the build, obviously. Uh, but here you can see what's going on. So you can see we actually have two threads now. We have a main thread, we have a render thread. You can see that we're actually bound here by the main thread, which is almost a bit funny because those timers seem to have been telling a different story. So that's a bit weird. But uh, what this is showing is that a frame is like around 3.8 milliseconds, for example, we have all of this. Let me just zoom in maybe in optics so we can see one frame a bit a bit better. So you can see we have the kind of on update runtime on render runtime. So this will basically update all the C sharp scripts uh, and like the physics and stuff like that. Render runtime will submit every single entity, which is what's happening here. And then in the next frame, uh, which if we just go to the previous frame, uh, the render thread will go through and actually, you know, issue Vulcan draw calls and all that stuff uh, and do much more other stuff like gather materials and whatever uh, to make sure that we can actually render, you know, what was submitted kind of from, he from here. So this stuff that's being submitted is kind of executed uh, here, I guess. That's how that works. Uh, and yeah, that results in in faster performance because you can see that we're now doing these things like kind of on top of each other right? Like if you look at this block here, especially this is like, this is us literally doing things in parallel at the exact same point in time, rather than one after the other, like we were doing with single threaded. Now I could talk about this a lot more. I might do a deep dive video or something about this. Let me know what you guys think, like in the comment section below, there are definitely some issues we need to iron out. This is a devlog. This is not like a 
fully finished presentation uh, and a research paper that I've spent the last few years on. There's work in progress, as always. And I guess that's what I'm trying to do with this series as well, just try and show stuff and not really care if it works perfectly or whatever, not try and give the illusion of perfection. Of course, there's lots of moving parts and lots of things that we probably still need to do, but that is up and running. And of course, this code like is pushed into the dichotomy branch in our repository. So if you're a patron, you can experiment with this, play around with it yourselves. I do kind of want to talk about the code uh, and show you the code. I'm not trying to be secretive with the code, by the way, although you can get it on Patreon, of course, and support the project. That would be nice. But it's just more so that uh, that that's going to be like an hour and I want to keep these devlogs a bit short. So I might do a deep dive and I might... Uh, I don't know, honestly, like maybe I, I was thinking of releasing exclusive videos for patrons at like a lower tier so that it's more accessible to you guys where I can just maybe just talk for an hour and actually show like the code and not care about editing or whatever. That's like for the people who really, really want want that. But I'm also happy to give just like a an overview of how it works here on YouTube as well without like spending hours on it. So yeah, let me know what you want to see because at this point it's more for you than for me.